Okay, so welcome back um, to what looks to be part five of our Nakshatras course, Nakshatras class here with M Michael Reed of Authentic Astrology. And today we're going to be focusing on um, four more Nakshatras, Hasta, Chitra, Swati, and Vishika. All right, Michael. <clears throat> so let's begin, starting with Hasta. What do you have, what do you have to tell us today? Thanks, Ryan. Well, I was, I was going to start by saying if we remember, we left our protagonist uh, feeling confident about his uh, journey and uh, ready to kind of thrust himself into, um, into action, so to speak. And Hasta is representative of that field of action. I, I want to start with Hasta by talking about the gunas that are associated with it, because it really gives a very um, good tone of what this particular energy is about. And Hasta is tamasic at its basis, so, so it's very firm, it's, it's very dense, it's, it's solid. And it builds upon that with even more tamasic energy. And on top of that is rajasic energy. So the feeling surfaces here of being firm in one center while facing inertia, while things are just moving over you and you're meeting with resistance. And so if we look at that in terms of the processes that are um, started by the nakshatras, we have the um, soul now thrust into action and having to face the resistance that it's going to encounter in order to bring things into being. And that, in essence, is actually the shakti or the energy of Hastanakshatra, which is the power to gain what one is seeking and place it in one's hands. Mm -hmm. Some texts use the, the term power to manifest, but I like the concept of, of gaining what one is seeking and placing it in one's hands. And it's associated, Hasta is, with Savitar, which is the life-giving aspect of the Sama. So the soul, you know, coming here in form, wanting to breathe life into something. And Hasta is also symbolized by the hand. And I always like using the analogy when I'm explaining Hasta Nakshatra of three different things that hands can do. Well, first of all, they can create things. And, you know, definitely Hasta is a very creativity-oriented nakshatra. Um, hands can also um, be used to ward things off, to like, like a stop sign, stop symbol, so to speak, to keep things at bay. And there is definitely an aspect of Hasta where the individual is having to face resistance, as I was saying earlier. <laughs> then comes the aspect of Hasta that we want to avoid which is hands also have a tendency to grab onto something and hold on to it and to try to control something. And that's, that's more of a, um, I don't want to use the word negative or not such a helpful association with Hasta Nakshatra. But even expanding further um, beyond the initial things that we were saying with Hasta and uh, being related to the hands, well, the hands are also used by the individual to, as we were saying, to create and perform necessary everyday actions, which are a part of our incarnation here on earth and the working out of our karma. Hands can also be used to measure space. I, the uh, measurement of a cubit is actually associated with the size of, of the hand. So here we're beginning to see the manifestation of time and space because Hasta Nakshatra is also associated with the duration. Mm -hmm. Hands can also give through, you know, giving or creating something or giving something to someone. In addition, they can receive. So here we have the, the yin and the yang, the uh, masculine and feminine, the positive and the negative, uh, purusha and prakriti, all associated with the hands. Uh, four fingers on our hands, um, aside from the thumb. So that's associated with kama, artha, dharma, and moksha. It's also associated with what are called the uh, four sheets, which are related to matter, life, mind, and intelligence. Uh, the four world ages, so again, we have time once again. And then if you look at your fingers, you've got 12 different joints, which very easily matches up with the 12 signs of the zodiac. So here in our hand, we have the entire universality. <laughs> of, and so it's very meaningful in relation to um, 
in relation to to Hastinakshatra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that really very much expresses it. And so, with that idea of um, growing, but also that idea of kind of holding on to something. Well, I suppose that might be related a bit to uh, the ruling planet being the moon, in that the moon, uh, based on how it's situated in the chart, it shows how we're going to be able to grow, um, grow our life or grow those areas of our life that we want to see come into fruition. Um, but also the clinging, uh, that can be the other side of the coin of the moon, which is more, I don't want to say greed, but kind of um, trying to hold on to the good things and, and not let them just pass. So the attachment aspect of the moon, is that? Exactly. And, you know, and adding to that, if we look at the um, concept of the moon always uh, growing uh, and decaying, so those things that we hold on to, once we decide we're going to hold on to something, we're, we're bound to the process of, of growth and decay. Mm -hmm. Our um, soul is naturally going to face that process of growth and decay, but there comes a level of consciousness where we're able to see somewhat beyond that and recognize that we're existing within it. But one aspect of us is beyond that. And I would say that's an approach to Hosta that, that's more aware, which is I'm here, I'm being acted through to create something. And we'll see how this develop, what develops further once we get into Chitra Nakshatra. Mm -hmm. But the, pro the process here is manifesting something for a purpose. Because the primary motivation that's connected to Hosta is that of moksha, liberation. Right. So the uh, the soul, you know, recognizes the, it has the confidence to face the battle that it's having to face, but it's coming into being and it's, it's wanting to be liberated, mm -hmm. you know, from, from some of the things it's going to have to face and the resistance it's going to have to encounter. So, you know, typically we do think about these in regards to how the moon passes through the nakshatra and what's good for for the day. But when we're looking at someone's chart, if the moon is in this nakshatra or if um, a planet or house lord is in this nakshatra, how could, how could we see that particular planet or that particular energy? Um, what would be the issue around that planet that we would get from nakshatra? Is it gaining something through that planet or uh, what exactly? How would we look at that? Well, I th again, I think it would depend upon the planet, but um, let's, let's pick some for instances. Let's say, well, you were using the moon. Mm -hmm. um, if the moon was under malefic influence, then it would probably be more reacting towards things with the impulse of wanting to control. This is under, this is under my control. Mm -hmm. I better do this in order to handle it right? If the moon is well supported, then the individual would be going, well, I'm going to allow this to manifest. Dependent upon, let's say the moon is the 10th house lord, mm -hmm. for instance, they would take that approach towards their career. They would try to, if it's poorly supported, try to manifest things for their career, try to create certain things for their career. We can go more into what careers they'd be involved in too, but that's another matter. Um, if it's well supported, then they're are letting things um, flow through them for the sake of, of bringing what they're needing to do with their um, obligations to their career. Okay, I see. I Just see. Naturally, letting it flow. Right, and um, um, well, let's let's pick another plan. Like, what, what if it was like? Um, what if we had Saturn or Mars? You know, Saturn or Mars in this particular nakshatra, and uh, how, how would that? You know, how could we? How could we look at those one or both of those planets to see? Um, how that plan is going to manifest in their life or manifest in their chart? Well, first of all, if we're talking about Saturn and Mars, we're talking about both planets being cruel. So they're going to get very firm and very determined. Mars would be very strong-willed towards doing that. Saturn would be very stubborn and, and practical towards achieving the things that it's, um, that it's wanting to achieve. There would be a certain level of refinement attached to both of them if they're, if they're well-supported and if we're dealing with a well-supported moon. If we're dealing with an ill-supported moon, then we're looking at um, you know, a lot of tension, a lot of stubbornness to try to create something when perhaps the individual might be better suited to... Um, to let go of it. Right. And so like maybe if we're thinking about Saturn and Saturn ruled over the second house dealing with our resources or, or accumulating resources, then that could show that there's a strong, consistent, steady approach to um, gaining those resources, uh, creating exactly. those resources. And if it's, if it's 
if it's negatively supported or not well supported, then maybe they're going to be very fixated on it to the point of stressing themselves out over it versus if it was well supported, then the person would just be very steady and, and moving forward a, um, a steady pace to accomplish those things. Does that sound accurate? That that's very switched on about what would happen to it. And that, okay. that's a very good assessment. Um, the other thing that's interesting about Hasta Nakshatra is it's considered a light and swift nakshatra. So it's going to um, require a certain amount of dexterity. That resistance part that you were talking about is going to be very much there. Right. Even, if, even if the individual is having a, a well-supported moon and the planet that's in the nakshatra is also well-supported, there will still be the resistance because it's that resistance that's, um, that's absolutely necessary in order to create the form. And so what do you mean? Like, can, can, when I think of resistance, I think of just obstacles and difficulties to experience something, but I, I don't think that that's exactly what you're getting at when you use the word resistance in this case. No, I, that's actually, that is what I mean. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, there will be certain obstacles and difficulties that the individual will face. I mean, because that's part of the process of manifestation anyway. Okay, I see. Or I should say that's part of the illusion of manifestation. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Good, good. Okay. Yeah. So let's, um, so we didn't go over the basis and the result for this particular nakshatra, which the basis above is seeking of gain. So the, the heavens impart us with a impulse to seek the gain of something. The basis below is the actual process of that gaining. And through the basis above and below comes the result of putting what one wishes to gain in one's hands. Mm -hmm. This is a Brahma-oriented nakshatra. It's a very creative nakshatra. And as we mentioned, the, um, the guiding impulse is moksha, liberation. So one is creating something or wishing to manifest something, but wishing to manifest it from the perspective of liberation. I want to, I want to create this so there will be less struggle in my life. I want to create this so that I won't have to deal with quite as much of that. Right. Well, that, okay. So then that also puts an idea, a different, uh, kind of a different spin a little bit on uh, moksha in that, whereas most people think of moksha as I need to get away from all this stuff or I need to not have to deal with it. Essentially what this is pointing out is what I think is a very yogic idea is that if you organize your life well enough, then you won't have to deal with the problems that make you think you need to have liberation. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Interesting. So, you know, Hasta, let's, let's talk about if a person had a, um, like their Atmakarika or their 10th house lord in Hasta Nakshatra. Some of the careers associated with Hasta Nakshatra are people who work with their hands. I've encountered um, a couple of different people who were tailors hmm. who had a, a career planet in Hasta Nakshatra. Right. Okay, so and um, so you're, you're talking about primarily like the Atmakarika or the tenth house lord, um, and what if? And just just throw out another idea here. What if it was um, the seventh house lord? Uh, how how might how might we see the seventh house lord playing out in Hasta Nakshatra? Well, let's let's uh, let's let's look at the most um, difficult aspect of that. Okay, wanting to manifest a relationship rather than allowing your relationships to naturally happen at the pace that they need to happen. I see. Okay. And with that, you know, like, for example, if we're looking at, um, you know, we're looking at, say, maybe it's Mercury as the seventh house lord, and it's in Hasa Nakshatra. Um, and the moon is well supported, and Mercury, for the most part, is doing all right, then that can show a person who does want to gain relationships, does want to um, experience something beneficial within relationships, grow that aspect of their life, and they might do it in a little more um, intelligent fashion if those, if those plants are well supported. Yes, in their interaction with the person that they would be, there'd be a lot of communication in okay. terms of how they would enter their relationships. There'd, there'd be a lot of interaction with the other individual. They would enjoy the other person's company, probably be a lot of um, humor back and forth, especially right. if it's a well-supported Mercury and a well-supported Moon. 
And, and if it was, if it was a difficult, we'll just say a difficult Mercury or, or not a well-supported Mercury, then that could make a person, since Mercury deals with managing things, could that, could that, could that show a person trying to manifest a relationship by trying to micromanage all the little details of relationships? Would that make sense? That's, that's very good too. Yes. Okay. Which can drive yeah. a partner nuts, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Excellent. So I, th I think that's, that's it for Hosta. Okay. Not